Whenever industrial projects are implemented in complex eco-epidemiological settings in the humid tropics, where most developing countries are located, it usually triggers a chain of events. Communities are resettled, people are attracted to the area by employment and other opportunities, roads are constructed, and traffic increases. As a result, remote rural areas transform into urban settlements within a couple of years. This new context not only influences local lifestyles, but also changes socioeconomic conditions and environmental factors. Consequently, such developments have the potential to alter patterns of soil, water, and waste-related diseases, vector-related diseases, communicable diseases, sexually transmitted infections, and so on. Some of these changes even go far beyond the project area. Health impact assessment is a combination of procedures, methods, and tools that systematically evaluate the potential and sometimes unintended effects of a policy, plan, program, or project on the health of a population and how those effects are distributed within the population. Health impact assessment identifies appropriate actions to mitigate negative health impacts and to promote positive health impacts Health impact assessment is a decision-making tool. Health impact assessment commonly follows a six-phase process. In the screening phase, the necessity of a health impact assessment is determined. The scoping phase identifies potential project-related health impacts and defines terms of references. A risk assessment aims to prioritize potential project-related health impacts. In the appraisal and mitigation phase, health interventions are developed, which are then implemented and monitored in the subsequent implementation and monitoring phase. Finally, the HIA process in its entirety is verified in the evaluation phase. While the choice of applied tools and methods for HIA is driven by the context of a given proposal, Identifying and selecting available evidence is a central feature of the scoping phase in developing country settings, where demographic and health data are notoriously scarce. This often leads to the conclusion that in order to appraise and monitor future health trends based on evidence, further baseline health data collection is required. Here's an example to help you visualize the issue. In the Republic of Guinea in West Africa, the development of a massive $20 billion iron ore project is underway. The project is currently in the exploration and feasibility phase. In addition to developing mines in the Simandu mountain range, the proposal will include upgrading access roads and building a small airport as well as a 650 kilometer long railway linking the mine to a deep water port. These developments will take place in an area with numerous communities of different population sizes. Due to the lack of representative local level health data, a baseline health survey was carried out as part of the health impact assessment. In potentially affected communities, sentinel sites were selected, which were then covered by different survey modules. So let us quickly look at the field work. The questionnaire survey team randomly selected households with the aim of obtaining broad coverage of the Sentinel site. Through interviews, knowledge, attitudes, and practices related to various health issues were assessed and structural and asset indicators were determined. Once the interview was completed, the family visited the clinical field unit so that clinicians could investigate biomedical indicators, such as anthropometric measures, plasmodium infection, and hemoglobin level. In parallel, the parasitological survey team collected urine and stool samples in school-aged children to determine the prevalence and intensity of soil-transmitted helminths and schistosoma infection. Further modules of the baseline health survey included a drinking water quality assessment, which targeted community drinking water points as well as households, 
and a service and infrastructure assessment evaluated infrastructure, services provided, equipment, supplies, and human resources at local health facilities. The findings of the baseline health survey showed considerable local variation in biomedical indicators, such as Plasmodium falciparum prevalence in children aged 6 to 59 months, and prevalence of Schistosoma mansonii infection in school-aged children, as well as in environmental indicators, such as the percentage of households that had E. coli contaminated drinking water. Variation was also found in indicators of knowledge, such as the percentage of adults over 15 years who reported condom use as an HIV prevention method, and in common practice indicators, such as the percentage of mothers that delivered their last child at a health facility. These findings illustrate the importance of developing appropriate local level baseline data that can serve as a benchmark for subsequent phases of the health impact assessment process. The risk assessment comprises a significance rating of potential health impacts. For this, a risk analysis matrix is employed and the rating of each potential health impact is performed for three distinct conditions. First, the baseline situation before project development. Second, the developed project without mitigation of potential adverse health impacts. Third, the developed project including implementation of health interventions. Once the significance rating for these three distinct conditions is complete, the appropriate mitigation measures for each potential health impact becomes evident. At the same time, opportunities for corporate social investment linked to public health are highlighted. It is crucial that mitigation strategies and health interventions are developed and implemented in close collaboration with project advocates, stakeholders, local health authorities, and other partners as this is the only way to ensure a sustainable implementation and monitoring phase. Finally, longitudinal monitoring, that is, recording available routine health facility statistics and collecting periodic cross-sectional health data, allows health interventions to be audited and adapted according to the health status of affected communities. This presentation gives an overview of health impact assessment as an evidence-based approach for mitigating potential negative health impacts of industrial projects operating in complex eco-epidemiological settings in the developing world.